It's draft week 2022. I'm Eagles insider Dave Spadaro at the NovaCare Complex. It's our last word before Thursday night arrives. I'm here with Eagles general manager Howie Roseman. Howie, I know it's a super busy time, super exciting, great energy in the building. Um, let's go back, though, first. Uh, first time you were in the Eagles draft room, and where was it? Yeah, 2001 draft, um, the Freddie Mitchell draft, and uh, Quinn Caver, right? Was yeah, it, uh, number two pick, pick, yeah. Pick, mm -hmm. And uh, Derek Burgess, and I remember before the draft, Coach Reed in his Hawaiian shirt walked up to me and he said, Roseman, don't mess this up. <laughs> and um, I probably can hear him in, in my head before our first round pick too. <laughs> Roseman, don't mess this up. What was your assignment? I was in charge of calling in the picks to New York. Um, there was part of me that wanted to make my own picks at that time and call them in, but uh, who knew that S 20 years later that you get that opportunity. What is it like for you? How it's been, you know, it's been 11 plus months of preparation to get to this point, what are you feeling? Yeah, I, I think it's fun. You know, um, uh, a lot of people uh, throughout the draft, the, well, the week of the draft, say you anxious, you are like we can't lose a game, right? We, all we can do is add. All we can do is get better. And I think the opportunity to get better excites me. Um, I think the whole process coming together and seeing the joy on the faces of our scouts and, and um, our front office when we make picks is, is fun. There's juice as part of it. Uh, and then there's the next stage, when they take that next stage, when they come on the field the following weekend uh, for rookie minicamp and then go to training camp. And all, all these guys you just you root for and you're excited to see whether it's our first round pick or whether it's an undrafted free agent that, you know, we're like, I can't believe that guy didn't get drafted. No doubt. So what does happen between now and then? Like, is it phone calls? Is it fine tuning the board? Or is it kind of done? Well, I would say this, there's no change in evaluations at this point. You know, I think some of it's maybe like, um, you know, for me personally, it's it's a lot of phone calls here just to make sure you touch base with every single team in the league, not only in the first round, but but later. But as I said last week, it's important to know really um, kind of the parameters of trade conversations when you're in the first round because you're trying to do five things. You know, you're trying to make sure you're watching the big board. You're trying to make sure you understand the value moving back, moving forward. And so then you get in a situation where you got to do all that and negotiate terms of a trade. You could do it, you know, and we have done it. But I think it, uh, a lot of the general managers in this league feel the same way about let's, let's understand that the guy that I like's not there, this isn't going to come into play. If the guy you really like's there, this isn't going to come into play. But if we were going to do it, that these would be the terms. Um, so I think that's important. And then I think for me personally, uh, maybe some uh, of our later guys just maybe refreshing on a little bit, um, just kind of looking at the reports that we have, that I have, that we're kind of looking and saying, let me just, I, I haven't spun this guy in a while. Let me just see that just to kind of go through it. And then a lot of scenarios, a lot of scenarios. But you know, this week's a fun week. All the scouts are in, and um, uh, there's a lot of energy in the building because of the players and the scouts. And so it, it's uh, a lot of haze in the barn, and you're just trying to make sure that um, you're ready emotionally and mentally for what is a long weekend of kind of being on it, you know. And so um, we'll take the next couple of days, and we'll enjoy each other and have some fun. Howie, some of the hay that you speak of comes in the form of Hassan Reddick and Zach Paschal and Kaiser White. And I would like you to tell me about Kaiser White. He's such a great, engaging personality who, who has all the right things in terms of what he wants to do to contribute to the football team. But I haven't really heard you talk about it much. Yeah, that's a great question. You know, Kaiser White is a guy that um, we had a lot of like coming out of college at West Virginia. And um, he's kind of similar to the guys that we extended last year in that he was playing his best ball goal in his fourth year. I mean, this guy really played an exceptionally high level, and uh, he's an off-ball linebacker who's played inside in a 3-4, he's played outside in a 4-3. Um, he's got tremendous intangibles, but his skill set is what drives you to him, right? And what his skill set is, explosiveness, he's able to take on for a guy that you know was a former safety. You're not ex expecting the shock in his hands that he has to be able to get off blocks. He can carry routes vertically, whether it's tight end, and he's got the change of direction to carry running back. So, um, I know that the, the analogy I gave when, when I was kind of talking to some people who did not know him was, this is like when we signed Sean Barber. It reminded me in 2003, mm. going mm. back when we signed Sean Barber, of that kind of player, that kind of person, um, who we signed to a one-year deal at the time. It, it kind of reminded me of that signing, and um, hopefully we'll get the same results. Hassan, I've heard a lot about. How about Zach Pascal? If I said Jason, if I said Jason Avant, would that be 
at all? Am I, am I allowed to be the sponsor for I'm, Zach Pascal anymore? You please know? do. I'm just, I'm just I <laughs> no. want to hear. Our players, our staff, they've, we've all heard about Zach Pascal since our coaching staff came from Indianapolis. And, and part of it was certainly about the intangibles that he has and the work ethic and the kind of leadership he brings to a football team. But all that's great. You have coaches for that too. You know, what he brings to the field, he can play inside or out. He's sure-handed. He can run good routes. He's a bigger physical body. And, um, you know, this is a guy for us that, uh, you know, the Colts tendered as a second-round pick last year. So obviously it shows the value to them, even with this coaching staff gone. And, you know, I think it's just another dependable player for us to have him filling. The roster as you see it now, including last year's draft class, which made such a great impact. We got a lot of good players. We got a lot of good people. But – we're still building it, you know, and I think from my perspective, I, I don't take this kind of big picture viewpoint at this moment. Um, for me, it's about adding and collecting as many talented pieces as we can as we're kind of building this thing. And I think at some point after the draft, and usually that's Saturday night, Saturday night, I'll, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll, I may or may not have a drink right next to me and I'll kind of ref, reflect on kind of what we had done over the past few days, what we have. Um, and it'll be like one of my latest nights of the year. I'll sit up and I'll just kind of go through all the reports and all the guys, and sometimes I'll kind of flash on a guy a little bit, especially like an undrafted guy, and, and I think that'll be the first time I'll say, all right, this is where I think we are right now before we start our rookie minicamp. Maybe here are a couple of spots we're still looking to add because we're not going to be a perfect team after this draft no matter what. Every team in this league is still going to have holes to fill after this draft. I promise you. Whoever's going to win the Super Bowl will have a hole to fill after this draft more than one hole, and that's okay, you know, because we still have a lot of time to fix that and um, evaluate our players and kind of go from there. And you've certainly filled those holes in the past. Howie, if you could just explain New Orleans, the trade, and how it benefits the teams. I know you, this team, you touched on it a bit with the fifth year, but just so the fans really understand what that means for the Eagles moving forward, why did you do the deal? I think, one, from, from our perspective, um, we wanted to make sure that we continued to have resources and be in any deal. You know, if there was a player that's available by, by trade going forward, you have those kind of assets. And when you have those assets, sometimes you're the first call to those teams when they're talking about player trades. They're going, hey, that's a team that had for us, you know, three first round picks. Let's see what we can get from them. Um, and so I think keeping us in the game from that perspective, having the flexibility to to know that, all right, we feel like we have a good sense of this year's draft. We had a little preview of next year's draft, but we don't know all that can come out. And so some of that unknown is also a positive. You know, who's going to come out next year? Who's going to send next year's draft? And now you have two first-round picks and two straight drafts. And I think that's exciting. I think that's exciting from a front office perspective to be able to kind of dip back into it and have the flexibility to do that. Um, and so we felt like just based on what we had in this draft, what we were looking at going forward, then looking at it and saying, like, if you hit on all these guys, you know, now you have three fifth-year options that is usually a pretty big number, no matter what position you're talking about. That's a one-year deal. Now you can extend those guys before, but, you know, extending guys has to work both ways. You know, it's got to work for us. It's got to work for the player. So, you know, if you went into that last year, that fifth year, and you had three fifth-year options, that's going to really kind of tighten your cap, no matter what the cap is going to be. You know, those numbers, I think, a lot of positions right now are 15, 16, you know, 13, 14 million dollars. So you think about that, that's three one year deals, somewhere around 45 to 50 million today. So what's that going to look like going forward? And so we kind of took it all and said, you know, it hurts to give up a first round pick, sure, but um, we felt like for where we're trying to build this thing, um, it was the right move. Okay, you're going into this draft. You've got two first-round picks. You've got five in the first 101, 10 picks overall. What is the mindset of the Philadelphia Eagles? Yeah, flexibility. You know, I think um, you can go in with a great plan, but if you're not flexible to change and see opportunities, whether it's going up, whether it's going down, whether it's a player you'd anticipate being there, um, I, think, I think you limit yourself. And so I think you go in with, hey, this will be a good outcome, but you have to be open to very different outcomes because um, if you go in and just say, hey, you know, this is the player that I'm going to take and it doesn't matter. I think it limits your flexibility to be able to go and say, wow, I didn't know this guy was going to be there. We, we did all the work on this guy, too. Like that, that's another good option for us. So, um, you know, I think as many meetings and as many scenarios as we go through, we have to be flexible. We have to be open that something's going to happen that we didn't anticipate and we'll be ready for it. Great. Howie, thank you so much. Good luck in the draft. Thanks, buddy. You too.